Hello, welcome to the course on polymers uh, in which we are looking at uh, applications of polymers. At the same time, we are looking at concepts and uh, properties of the materials and uses. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, we have laid a lot of emphasis on uh, the properties of the materials and uh, while we discussed uh, electrical response, viscoelasticity in polymers, we are continuing some of the discussion related to the complex behavior that these macromolecular systems show. Uh, so, as we continue our discussion uh, related to the viscoelasticity in polymers, uh, in this lecture I wanted to highlight uh, some of the trade tests which are used and trade tests are called uh, this way because they are specific to a trade and by trade we mean a given application. So, so for example, uh, if, if let us say uh, uh, a fluid is being used as a shampoo, then uh, there will be a very specific test related to you know how does it feel when you spread it in hair kind of a thing how does it feel to the hands. So, these, these are related to the trade of shampoos, while a fluid uh, behavior which is viscosity can be same for all of them. But necessarily viscosity need not correlate to how it feels in our hands and how it feels in our hair. So, that is why there are trade tests which will then try to assess when you develop a shampoo material, how good or bad does it feel to a customer. So, trade tests therefore, are always closely related to the application itself. And so, we will do a uh, uh, short review of uh, why and how some of these tests are used in case of polymeric materials. So, our emphasis will uh, remain on uh, applications and uses of these polymers. So, we will uh, look at a survey of some of the trade tests which are used and uh, we will also look at the electrical uh, side of the trade test where surface conductivity or surface resistivity is measured, which is more applicable for certain uh, uses of these polymeric systems. So, measurement for mechanical properties for a given application sometimes can be very complex, because the mechanical response itself is very complex. We know that there could be plastic deformation, there could be viscoelasticity, there could be damage in the material in the form of crack uh, propagation, there could be damage in the form of fatigue which is accumulation of uh, some of the damage which much less amount of loading. Uh, there could be a very high rate of uh, loading in the material which leads to uh, the defects and the cracks uh, propagating in a very different way. So, so, given that there are these multiple phenomena involved, uh, it may not be always feasible for us to correlate some of the mechanical properties that we measure in the lab with the eventual application. So, when I say this, uh, we, we uh, uh, should be uh, uh, cognizant of the, I, uh, the overall process which takes place. So, given that there is an engineering application, in the end we have to design a part, we have to put a material out for that application. And uh, sometimes if the understanding is not there, we will need the empiricism associated with it, so that we can design with confidence. Some other time we have a very good scientific uh, information available, so we can get quantitative information. So, there is always uh, back and forth between scientific understanding, very careful examination, very brute force lot of data collection and empiricism. A collection of all of these drives our overall set of applications for any material. So, to, this is true in case of polymeric materials also. So, many times for engineering design and quality testing, it is helpful to have these trade tests. And uh, some examples are for, for example, uh, is, is hardness uh, or scratch resistance. So, clearly how a material scratches is uh, related to the mechanical properties, because in the end scratch is a crack in the material, but only a surface phenomenon. So, how does uh, let us say so the secondary or primary interactions or uh, the microstructure of polymer, how does it influence the scratch resistance? So, that is a fundamental question. But in terms of evaluating whether a material may be suitable or not, we can develop a trade test and then measure the scratch resistance. And similarly, for uh, films uh, or for uh, sheets, we can look at uh, tearing strength or puncture uh, when we pressurize uh, something, how does it puncture and so on. So, these are all ways where there are mechanical properties involved, but it is unlike a simple rod which we extend and then try to test mechanical properties under very controlled conditions. So, the generally features of these trade tests are that uh, it is not really a material property. 
Uh, what do I mean by that? I, it, it depends on what geometry is being used, what condition is being used. So, generally trait tests are like a protocol is given where very specific geometry and conditions are given. Only then whatever number comes is useful and this is again based on the empiricism, this, this is again based on our engineering judgment, years of experience of using a set of polymers for a given application. So, therefore, there are several types of testers uh, due to historical reason depending on application in one area or another area, we will have uh, the testers in all different uh, kinds and uh, trait test measure is generally a number. Uh, there may be units on it, but given that it is not a material property, generally we tend to think in terms of this being a number which is useful in terms of quality gradation and not really in terms of quantifying the material behavior. So, for example, a 10 mega Pascal uh, strength uh, or a 15 mega Pascal tensile strength in a uniaxial tension or let us say a modulus of uh, 2 giga Pascals as opposed to 2.5 giga Pascals, these are all material properties and, and uh, regardless of the geometry being used, uh, these properties tell us something about the material. In this case, uh, if let us say we have hardness of uh, 60 or hardness of 70, it, it uh, depends on what hardness tester was used, uh, whether 60 is good for an application, maybe, but for another application, uh, even though we have same material being used. Uh, the 60 as a measure may not give us a good idea. So, therefore, we have to change the test. So, many of these tests are specific. Given a validation for a application, they are useful for design and quality testing. And so, same material in another application, these numbers may not be very useful. And uh, just the way, uh, given that uh, we, we have several uh, ways to test uh, Given that we know now material microstructure at microscopic scales as well as uh, nanometer length scales. Now, can we do a hardness test at very low length scale? So, for example, nano indentation, which tries to indent a material at very fine length scale of nanometer size and then uh, depending on the load and displacement that happens due to this indentation, can we get a material characterization? So, such a trait test does not exist right now. It is not yet clear for any given application that this nanoscopic uh, measurement is precise and therefore, this gives a number which will be very immediately useful. But what I am trying to uh, uh, inform is that this is the process by which we actually get the trait tests. We, we have to get a set of numbers which are very useful for a given application for their design and quality testing. So, hardness on the other hand what is practiced is a hardness tester of this kind where there you have a tip and this through a load uh, this tip is uh, indented on the material and then you measure uh, how much is the displacement. How much does this uh, tip indenting the material go inside the material? How much is the deformation in the material? And it is actually very complex from the point of view of uh, what happens in terms of strain in the material. So, these days of course, because of simulations capabilities that we have and the modeling capabilities we have, we can try to say that for a given material with a given material properties in terms of stress strain curve, how will the hardness be there and such rationalizations are quite common these days. But practitioners uh, go ahead and use the test and get the numbers and based on the numbers deductions are made. So, measurement of indentation uh, as uh, uh, load is uh, impinged on a material and uh, the advantage of this hardness testing is it is a very quick and easy test, very inexpensive because of the instrument and uh, the sample preparation requirement and uh, other big advantage is you can do the testing on a part itself. You do not need a rectangular specimen, you do not need some other specimen, whatever is the part, you can uh, measure the hardness at a point and get the idea. So, several types of testers are there, there is shore hardness, there is rockwell hardness. You can see that depending on the history, depending on the application, various different types of instruments have been developed. For polymers generally, shore A, shore D and rockwell are used. And you can see that uh, the range of reading is 0 to 100 in all cases, but it is not that they are always uh, a 60 shore D hardness may not be uh, same as shore A hardness because they are 
basically different load, the instrument configuration is different. But at the end, if shore D hardness is useful for an application, the technical data sheet of the polymer will give you that data so that you can make judgments. And then when you go from one grade of the polymer to the other because of cost considerations or because of processing considerations, you can uh, try to search and keep your search limited to show D hardness which is useful for your application. So that's why these are very good guidelines for uh, practical applications. Uh, just to highlight, we can look at this uh, exam question where uh, different types of tests are used. So we have some uh, tests which characterize the material properties. For example, in this case, the flexural strength or tensile strength uh, are material properties. And then there are trade tests, which uh, for example is uh, Shore D and uh, notched Izod. So in fact, uh, the way I have described itself gives you part of the answer. So if you look at the set of mechanical properties and set of testing methods, you should be able to figure out which test is useful for which mechanical property. And generally, not just in the mechanical domain, such trait tests are uh, uh, prevalent for all different kinds of measurements also. For example, uh, many of the plastics uh, where we want them to be glossy or uh, hazy depending on the application. So, so we have a refractive index which is a material property which could be used. But absorption coefficient is something used from trait tests. Similarly, degradation and uh, combustion behavior can be assessed by looking at rate of reactions uh, which are happening during a combustion process. But we could do a test which is called flammability test. It gives you a quick look at what may be the combustion behavior of a polymeric system. Tribology which is a surface friction phenomena we could measure. Uh, and similarly, uh, there is a breakdown of the material on surfaces. Whenever uh, material, uh, two materials uh, slide past each other, there is abrasion and wear. And again, there are trade tests associated with how to measure the abrasion and wear of material. But fundamentally speaking, it is a fracture phenomena confined to the surface. So the fracture energy, the stress intensity factor and uh, impact uh, resistance or the overall stress strain curve, all of these should give us indicators about abrasion and wear also. But abrasion and wear trait tests give you a quick assessment, semi-quantitative or quantitative way of grading different materials. So continuing along these lines, another uh, important property which is measured uh, for practical applications point of view is uh, surface resistivity. So volume uh, resistivity is what is a material property. That is what we define as resistivity or conductivity. So therefore, uh, rho L as is defined here is a material property. And it can be measured by uh, basically taking uh, the material between two electrodes whose area is A and the distance between electrode is L. So based on that, we can measure the volume resistivity or the conductivity of the material, which is a material property. On the other hand, we can also measure uh, surface resistivity or surface conductivity. And this test is again completely from the point of view of applications. Because the bulk resistivity or volume uh, resistivity may not be important because the material is anyway insulating. So it is not really per serving any purpose of conducting in the application. However, depending on the quality of surface, it may have accumulation of static charges it may have some discharge on the surface. So therefore, surface conductivity may be a good measure of uh, what its performance is in a given application. And so this uh, uh, surface conductivity uh, is uh, related to electronic uh, conductivity uh, if there is a very thin layer through which conduction happens. But uh, problem with surface conductivity or resistivity is that it depends on whole lot of other factors. So there is a difference between the bulk conductivity and surface conductivity due to dust and impurities on the surface, some other solvent or moisture which is absorbed on the surface. So therefore, surface properties are very different due to volume properties. So now you can see why application orientation, uh, application uh, of, uh, of a given kind is so important in terms of these trade tests or why trade tests are used for these practical considerations. Because by measuring volume resistivity or conductivity of the material, you may not know what is the surface resistivity useful for a given application because that depends on what is the 
nature of the surface and nature of the surface will depend on application. So, if it is let us say an application where lot of oil and petrol and other uh, such substances come in contact surface resistivity would be different, but let us say it is an application which is used in marine applications where it is mostly uh, salt water system which it uh, gets exposed to then that is a very different environment and surface conductivity may be very different then. So, therefore, surface conductivity depends a lot on what surface is in relation to the environment. And so, relation between volume resistivity and surface resistivity therefore, is very complex. Uh, if you use a four probe method, then uh, you can correlate these based on the thickness, uh, the thin thickness that we talked about uh, in terms of voltage and current measurement. But generally, this is not really well established. But what we do is we use these formula to calculate the surface resistivity given this theory. This theory is actually for a very specific uh, case where uh, volume and surface resistivity are related, where the conductivity is through a very thin layer T T and we are using a four probe method. But what we do for a practical purposes is just use the four probe method, use this formula and get a number. And then this number can be used for gradation, fully realizing that this is no longer a material property, but it is a number which gives us a semi quantitative qualitative idea of what the material response could be as a part in an application. For example, polyether ether ketone which is a material uh, it is used in aerospace, but it can be used in uh, electronic components also. Uh, their electrostatic discharge prevention is a very important property. And so, for that uh, technical data sheets would try to report for example, Victrex is a uh, brand name uh, for uh, this material and they report uh, the surface uh, and uh, volume resistivity. So, that these can be used for deciding about the practical application. So, with this uh, we will close uh, in terms of uh, the tests you, you would have spotted that uh, impact uh, IZOD is the uh, technique for hardness it is sure. And similarly for flexural we have to use three point bend. So, three point bend is where two points are uh, kept on a rigid plate and the, then we actually press it with the single point. So, that the material bends. So, three point bend tensile. So, these are all different ways in which we characterize the materials. So, with this we will close this lecture related to trade tests. Thank you.